Oh, hey everybody. We're gonna learn a little bit about color theory for visual effects today. Color is something that's very important to what we do. It's found in the world all around us, learning about the principles of color, the relationships between colors, and how to use those in your visual effects. This is gonna be taught by David Shevlin. David is a senior VFX artist at Riot Games. He worked on Valorant. You might recognize him from Side Scroller course, the Booms and Blasts, and Concept Painting courses. You can go check that out in the description. We've got all those courses there. But for now, I'm just gonna turn it over to David. Hi, this is Dave Shelton with VFX Apprentice, and we're gonna be talking about color theory today. So what exactly is color? You might know that light is a type of electromagnetic radiation, which we here can most usefully classify according to its wavelength. Most of these classes are invisible, with infrared, microwave, and radio wavelengths being too long for our eyes to see for various physical reasons, and ultraviolet X and gamma rays being too short. Most humans have trichromatic vision, meaning that our retinas contain three different types of photoreceptive cone cells, short, medium, and long, or, you know, S or M or L for short. They're uh, called cone cells because they have these little cone shapes at the end of them. These each see overlapping sections of this little band of EM frequency range, and that's what we call the visible spectrum. Red is our word for the longest wavelength that we can see, and blue is what we call the shortest, with green being somewhere in the middle. Violet, or purple, appears to us as a color between red and blue because our L cones are ever so slightly receptive to the frequencies at the very shortest end of the spectrum, where our S cone range falls off. So, all the colors you see are your brain interpreting the activation patterns of these three types of cones. Your brain makes up all the colors in between, including colors that don't exist in the spectrum, like magenta, which is its interpretation of a mix of very short and very long wavelengths. This is why color can be modeled as a wheel as well as a straight line. This is also why primary colors mix to form secondary ones, and monitors only need to emit light in three wavelengths to simulate the entire visible spectrum. Now this idea of primary and secondary colors changes relative to the medium that you're working in. Before color monitors, the idea of primary color was defined in the art world by the behavior of physical media. The application of pigment or dye causes a surface to absorb the majority of the light hitting it so that it reflects back only a single wavelength, which is why pigments like those in a printer cartridge always darken when you blend them. And a green made by mixing blue and yellow paint will always be less vibrant than one made from a single green light reflecting chemical. Of course, a monitor pixel works the opposite way, adding light to a black surface instead of subtracting it from a white one. So the secondary colors often end up being brighter than the primary ones. Okay, now that we've got that uh, crash course in optics out of the way, let's have a look at Unreal's color picker. It's very similar to the one that you'll find in Photoshop or Procreate or Flash or Unity or whatever you're using. We've got that color wheel that we discussed and our RGB values right underneath here. You've also got alpha or uh, transparency, which is how much the color blends with whatever's behind it. Apart from these, you'll see another set of three values, and uh, that's HSV, which stands for hue, saturation, and value. Instead of value, you'll sometimes see B for brightness or L for luminance, uh, but it all means the same thing. And these are the three main characteristics we think of a color as having. S and V are also these two sliders here um, next to the color wheel because the wheel itself is H. Hue describes which side of the color wheel a color is closest to. Is it more bluish or is it more yellowish? Value describes how close to pure white or black it is. or so, how dark or bright it is. And uh, saturation is the purity or vibrance of the color. You could also describe it as the difference between the highest and lowest RGB values in a given color. Colors with more uniform RGB values, like your grays, or your office space colors like mauve or beige or taupe, are said to be desaturated. Now this color wheel stuff's long been considered one of the most foundational concepts in visual art. In order to use color effectively, you need to develop an intuitive understanding of how hues blend. 
and their location relative to each other on the color wheel. This comes to some people more quickly than others, so if you're new to this, a real simple little exercise you can do is just color matching, as if you were painting, but uh, with RGB. Think of or look at a color you want to make, and see if you can guess its RGB value. Then punch it in to see if you're right. You'll end up surprising yourself by how close you can get. That's uh, about it for this intro lesson, and I'll catch you all in the next one, where we're going to tackle this V here, and uh, talk about the importance of value, and how to play with it. See you then. I hope you found that helpful on your VFX learning journey. For more information and free courses like this one, go ahead and check out vfxapprentice.com. You can come over there and see all the cool stuff that we've got set up. We have a Discord server and free training, also tons of lessons inside of our courses for both 2D and 3D effects for animation and real-time effects as well. And there's just lots of great things. You can see why thousands of people have been joining us to accelerate their learning journeys, whether they're total beginners or even working professionals. All right, that's everything for now, and we'll catch you in the next video.